I'm uh, Tony Dallas, um, Dallas' son. Um, let me just give you a brief sort of outline of what's going to be happening here. Um, I'm going to uh, be talking a little about um, uh, my father, and then Louise is, Smith is going to talk, and then the, we have some slides of my father in the theater. Some of you, uh, a number of you, have probably not had that experience of seeing him in shows before. Then my sister, um, Wendy, is going to be reading a poem, and then we're going to uh, share uh, you know, memories from all of you people. And then I have a few closing words. Um, that was a peak. <laughs> that was a... <laughs> The name Dallas is uh, a fabrication where the name comes from, uh, I, I think, is lost. Um, why it came about is not lost. Uh, my, grand, my father's grandfather uh, was a man by the name of Edwin, Ed, Edmund Stanley, Captain Edmund Stanley. He was a Welsh-mounted border guard in India and got fooling around with the widow of an army doctor, Mrs. Maidley. And uh, <laughs> soon after uh, the fooling around, she took a ship back to England, to, to Leicester, England, where she um, hid out with her midwife, with the, 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 the woman who had been the midwife of her previous children, and um, delivered the baby there. And um, so my grandfather, um, he also he was born with a cleft palate, and he was born with a cleft palate. His, his belief was, because she was jumping off balconies and tumbling downstairs, <laughs> trying to uh, self-abort. <laughs> uh, it was not successful. Uh, whether that had to do with his cleft palate or not, but he was born with a cleft palate, and the last name of Dallas, and where the name Dallas comes from, uh, we don't know. He grew up, when he was um, old enough to be sent off to school, he was sent off to school in Yorkshire, uh, just outside of the city of York, where he was told that he was earning his board and keep, uh, and he was uh, beaten regularly by the headmaster who would uh, take his snotty uh, handkerchief and stuff it in his mouth and make his, you know, uh, put his arms around a chair and then uh, beat him with his belt. Uh, he used to take a... Uh, uh, match and uh, hold, made, make him hold his finger till it blistered under the match. And then he was doing all sorts of uh, work around the place, believing that he was uh, basically earning his board and keep. Until he became of age about 10, at which point um, the money was no longer being sent to the school. His mother had been sending money to the school all along. And he was sent off to... Um, to stay with his mother in London, who was running a boarding house at that point. Uh, in the interim, his mother and father had gotten married, and his mother had, um, had some connections with the Lord Mayor, of, was friends with the Lord Mayor of London's wife. And she got him a job as the Lord Marshal of London, which was principally riding in front of the Lord Mayor's parade on this fancy white stallion. Uh, he was quite a showmanship. He looked sort of like my father on, uh, sort of puffed up and on steroids. Uh, and he was quite a woman's man. At least he certainly fancied himself to be. Um, he got screwing around with the Lord Mayor's daughter. <laughs> which got him out of his post and also uh, uh, got him out of his marriage. Um, so the money was no longer coming in. And um, my, uh, my, father, my grandfather was sent off to live with his mother, who was running this boarding house. She immediately uh, tried to shuffle him off to Stanley when she had got Stanley located by a detective. <laughs> and Stanley was located, and she was, she was shuffled off with Stanley, who was living with this uh, actress woman <laughs> named Pandora Mahala. <laughs> 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 And she didn't want the kid around. And so basically, he was spending most of his time out on the streets. 
And, um, and then he was finally taken in by this family, uh, this uh, woman who ran a laundry service. <coughs> and um, she and her, uh, he ended up falling in love with her daughter. And um, he found portage to Canada, uh, which I believe was free as a, either as an English citizen or as an orphan, um, and got working on the railroads in um, England, in, uh, in Canada. And wages were better in America, which brought him over to Detroit, which, and then he uh, called for my, uh, his, to become wife. She came over and they got married. Um, whether this has any sort of roots in terms of theater, it's certainly good theatrical <laughs> material. I do think it has some sense of the grandiose, which I think my father has a sense of. Um, my father was the third child, he was the second son. Um, and when my father was six, the, uh, his older brother died of, an, his older brother Eric died of a, Accident. It was a basically bumped by car. Some cinders got into the wound, and it turned eventually turned gangrenous, and then um, he had to have that leg amputated, and then he died, uh, which meant my father became the oldest son at that point. And this um, the, the sort of burden of being the oldest son in this family became somewhat apparent when uh, they uh, invited the minister of the church, who was a Lynn Harold Hoff, to come to their house. They went to Central, Chap Central Church, in the church in Detroit, uh, which is a very progressive, has a long progressive history. Uh, but Lynn Harold Hoff arrived at the uh, house in a chauffeur-driven Rolls Royce <laughs> <laughs> and came down the, the, the driveway. My father once described it to me as, Lynn Harold Hoff uh, exited the Rolls Royce and then walked across the water to our house. <laughs> um, whatever, however the dinner went, um, after the dinner, he went across the water again to his Rolls Royce. <laughs> and uh, my, my, my grandfather, his father, is, has his arm around my father, so watching them through the screen door uh, go back to the car and... Um, his father says to him, that's what I want you to be when you grow up. 